The more you manage summer expenses, the more time and money you have for fun in the sun. Summer is a time for fun, relaxation, and making memories, but the costs can add up quickly. In this video, we will prep you for summer expenses, some of which you may be overlooking. And then we'll give you some solutions that will help you to save hundreds of dollars this summer. But if you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. This is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Tip number one is saving costs on cooling. You know, the number one expense is air conditioning our homes. You just look at your electric bill before air conditioning is turned on, after air conditioning is turned <laughs> wow. on. It happens every single summer. So let's sort of mitigate that really high spike that you see when you turn on the central air. One thing that you can do is delay the date at which you turn on the central air. We always have a focus date that we try to get to. My focus date is July 1st. Larry's focus date is... When it gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> in Illinois, it's definitely that yeah. sticky humidity. When that yeah, comes in, yeah. that is when we really need to turn on the central air. One of the things that you can do is that you can use a dehumidifier in lieu of turning on the central air. That mm -hmm. will take a lot of the humidity out of the air and will also bring down the temperature. However, you have to bear in mind that when you run that dehumidifier, you are eating up energy costs in the form of the dehumidifier. You have to close off the area that you're you're dehumidifying mm -hmm. because on the upstairs of our house that's where we open the windows and run a whole house fan in order to bring some of that cool night air in but we don't want that in the basement where we're running the dehumidifier all right so let's just say that you've decided to give up the ship and you are turning on your central air studies have been done that show that when you do program your thermostat particularly if you program that thermostat so that your central air is up several degrees when you are not in the house at all you actually do have a lower energy bill at the end of each month. One of the things you can do to save some extra money on your air conditioning is turn the thermostat up a couple of degrees, maybe as much as three or four degrees. That way, what you do in order to stay cool is use some fans. Put some fans in the room that you're in, in your bedrooms, and that way you're circulating the air that's in there. Circulated air will keep you cooler, and that allows you to turn that air conditioning up without feeling oppressed from the heat. Statistics, let's talk about them just for a second. Scientists tell us that when you use these techniques that we're talking about, you can raise your central air by up to four degrees with no noticeable change in the comfort of sitting in a room. And the other thing you have to bear in mind is that once again, statistically, for every degree that you raise that central air, you will save between one and 3% on next month's utility bill. We've tracked it and for us, it's somewhere around 2% for each degree that we raise the thermostat. What do we keep our thermostat at? You might be asking in the middle of the mm -hmm. summer, we keep it at 78 degrees. And yeah. believe me, if we were uncomfortable, we would be turning that thermostat down. But by using the techniques that we just told you about we keep very comfortable and speaking of keeping heat out of the house our second tip deals with cooking now cooking always mm -hmm. produces heat there's no way that you can get around that totally but there's different ways that you can cook that will produce a lot less heat for instance crock pots don't produce as much heat. They don't give off that much compared to a stove or an oven. Also pressure cookers, they cook much faster. That allows you to put less heat in the room. If you can grill outside, then that gets the cooking outside and you're not heating your house up at all. And anytime you can set a, an appliance, a cooking appliance outside, like on a porch in order mm -hmm. to cook, that's another great way to keep your house from being impacted while you're cooking. And of course, another way to avoid putting heat into the house is to simply serve meals during the summer which don't involve cooking. The other thing to bear in mind is if you can heat the house up once and cook a lot of any given item, then you can serve it as leftovers throughout the week and you're once again only heating the house up once and not three or four different times. 
One of the things that we like to do in the summertime is be entertained. So our tip number three <laughs> is you need to do your entertainment on a budget. And there's a lot of things you can do for free. There's a lot of community events, at least in our city, and I'm sure in every city for that matter, there are free events that you can attend that's not going to cost you anything. We used to have a, a at one of our local parks that would show free movies. Uh, and that way you could take your whole family out and watch movies for free. There are free concerts you can attend. There's lots of different things that you can do in this area and save money. Google the following phrase, free events in my area this weekend. Yeah. I just did it and I came up with this idea. It's called Park Palooza. Ah. Now I chose this to show to you because not all parts of the Park Palooza are free. Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware of that. There's a portion of the Park Palooza that everyone can go to and it's absolutely free, but there are other portions of that same event or festival that may very well cost you. Nope. So make sure that you're aware of all of the uh, costs of the event before you get there and make sure that you Google whether you're going to have to pay for parking near the event yeah. or not. The really fun thing about some of these events is that oftentimes they will have local merchants there who have set up booths and they will have a way that you can enter a contest. You might win some cool swag, some gifts, some prizes. And speaking of a chance to win a lot of cool things, our sponsor for this video, Opus, is having a Father's Day celebration special where they're offering prizes and all kinds of cool free things to win and save money on their products. During the Father's Day celebration, when you spend $1,500 or more, Opus will deduct 10% off of your bill. They'll do it automatically. You don't have to have a coupon code. But listen up, because we do have a coupon code, which will save you an additional 5%. They have some fantastic sale prices going on during this sale, but it would be a lot easier if you just head to their website and take a look to see what they have to offer that might meet your specific needs. However, having said that, here are a couple of our very favorites. The Mega 5, which is the largest unit that Opus sells. Right now, you can get up to $2,400 off when you purchase the Mega 5, plus an extra battery, plus you get six 240-watt solar panels. You want to check that out. I think it's around 29% off. The Opus 1800, which happens to be our personal favorite. It's nice and small. It's portable. You can carry it around with you. It charges quickly, and it runs a lot of products. Remember, this is an 1800-watt power station. It is also on sale. Now let's get to the really good part, the contests and the prizes. You can go to the website and share a particular moment that makes your dad a super dad, and you put that under Super Daddy. This gives you a chance to win $1,000 and their small portable power station. It's called the Exodus 600. I've done a review on it. I love that power station. It's really good. But here's something else that's super duper fun. And that is if you go to their Facebook group, then you can share your plans for Father's Day. Now the contest over there, they are giving away not one, two, three, four, five, but six of the Exodus 600 watt portable power stations along with a solar panel to run that power station. So ready, set, go, shop, and enter. And remember, all the important links are gonna be all the way at the top of the description of this video. Now, the next thing that you wanna be aware of in terms of summer expenses are special events and mm -hmm. celebrations that occur during the summer. These would be things like anniversaries, weddings, graduations. Mm -hmm. In fact, we just went to a graduation <laughs> today. And these will cost you a little bit because you wanna buy something for the person that is being celebrated. The other thing you want to take into consideration is if you are invited to a wedding and it's not near you, you're going to have some travel costs associated with that. Along with special events and celebrations, you can have parties and events in your backyard. Let's say, mm -hmm. how about having a barbecue and having your friends over? That'll be a lot less expensive than reserving a spot at a restaurant. But it also does mean that you could come up against some extra expenses to perhaps buy tableware that you can mm -hmm. maybe discard rather than washing up on the table where <laughs> yeah. after your guests are gone and perhaps some special ingredients you might want to buy because you're having friends over and so those are extra expenses when it comes right. to summertime they just won't be as high mm -hmm. as if you go to some organized place in order to have that event but let's talk about going to some other place oh, some other place than home and that would be known as a summer vacation yeah. we've got some very specific tips for you on how to save on summer vacation 
Hope and I have done this a lot in our lifetime, and that's having a staycation. Usually that gives me some time to do some work around the house. Let's say I take a week off. I might spend two days doing some work, and then we might spend two days on a staycation each day at a time going to separate places. Do some research on the web and find places within a day's drive of your home that you can take your family to and enjoy. And you take your food along with you, stop at a yeah. local park to eat yeah. your food, and you may go ahead and eat dinner out on your way back. One of the things that we do is we plan it a little bit so that we know pretty much where we're stopping on the way back home. Mm -hmm. We pull up their menu online and look yeah. at it before we get to that restaurant so we know exactly what we're going to purchase and we know it's within the budget that we have set for that staycation. The other thing that we do is mm -hmm. we plan one or two different things we really want to get done around the house, but don't don't right. plan it so heavy that all you wind up doing is sitting around your house because yeah. a staycation may be staying near home, but it doesn't mean staying at home the whole <laughs> right, time right. that you are off of work. You want to make sure that you have some fun for some rest and relaxation. Now, let's talk about travel where you're going to go more than one day away from home. Here's what you need to be aware of. Off-season rates. Yeah. Usually, the summer season rates start right before you hit Memorial Day. Before that time, it's still really nice weather and a lot of locations, and you can go and enjoy some outdoor fun, but it's going to cost you a fraction of what you're going to pay if you wait until after Memorial Day. Right. Now, I know that this video is being shown for the first time after Memorial Day. So why am I mentioning this? Because it works exactly the same way at the other end of summer. Yes, it does. You want to find out when the summer rates end yeah. and when the fall and winter rates come in and you will save a ton of money. Our son Daniel's girlfriend and her family just did this. I'm gonna tell you exactly what they did. She went to the website and looked for look for deals or specials or mm -hmm. packages, something that is called that. And you are going to see what they are offering. Now, in this specific case, they were offering a great deal right before Memorial Day. Not only did they get a hotel room, they got a suite. It had two bedrooms, a kitchenette, so they, they could eat a lot of their meals there in the hotel. Nice. It also had a living room with a pull-out sofa sleeper. And it came with two day of water park passes for each of the five people that went. They also had a huge area that was like a rope climbing area. They had miniature golf that they played. They had bowling that they played in addition to the water park and in addition to the fact that they gave them a $100 voucher toward food at the event center. She paid about $500 for a two-day stay. It was one night, two days, and that stay right now, it would be $1,000. Wow. Shop off season and look for deals, look for packages, because sometimes it really is a lot less expensive. Let's say it's the middle of summer, so you can't go by when the season is ending or beginning. Use Groupon, the place that my son's girlfriend's family went, you could actually save 45% using Groupon. You have to remember that you need to figure in extra gasoline costs somewhere. Oh, yeah. I, I bring this up because people tend to think, all right, my food's taken care of and my accommodations are taken care of. Everything's good to go. We're going to have some fun things to do. And they forget that your gas bill that month is going there to go up, up yep. because you're traveling there and back again. You can do one of two things. Either you can increase the amount that you've budgeted for gasoline mm -hmm. that month, which is perfectly fine to do, or you can roll the gasoline expenses into your vacation fund and take it out of that. What we do is we generally make a notation of our beginning mileage, and our ending mileage. As soon as we go come back to town, we fill up on our way back into town. Yeah. Any of the gasoline costs that we spent, that is considered gasoline for vacation instead of our normal gasoline budget. We kind of touched on this before, but if you're gonna go on vacation, make sure you budget some money mm -hmm. for eating out and spending a little bit extra that way because you wanna have fun and enjoy the time that you're with your family. And you do wanna have a little bit of souvenir money set aside. Yeah. 
A couple more tips as far as getting tickets before we move on. You wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of any opportunity that you have to save money on tickets based on your age. As you get older, sometimes they do offer you a little bit off of your ticket package if you are say age 55, 60, or 65 plus. You also wanna look and see if they are offering discounted tickets during specific days of the week. Sometimes midweek where there's not as many visitors, oftentimes amusement parks or different attractions will mm -hmm. offer discounted tickets because they wanna make sure they fill up the spaces and if they have to sell tickets at a discount to do that, they'll do so. Tip number six has to do with affordable activities that you can do with your kids. And one of those places, and we've mentioned this so many times, <laughs> is your library. What a great resource for free activities during the summertime. A lot of DIY activities you can do at home with your kids. Invite all of their friends over to spend some time with you because nothing's funner during the summer than having just one or two of your own kids and then three or four of their friends coming over to do some arts and crafts activities. You can make a DIY slip and slide in your backyard. Listen, you take garbage bags. You cut them <laughs> apart so they make a big rectangle, a big open rectangle. <laughs> then you take packing tape and you tape a lot of garbage bags together and you're going to put a sprinkler so it goes just over the top of the slip and slide and then kids are going to start at the top and they're going to slide their way down to the bottom there you go for pennies guys homemade slip and slide when it comes to special gear that you might need for your outdoor adventures, mm -hmm. remember that you can borrow a lot of gear. Maybe you have friends that have mm -hmm. some gear. Maybe they have a tent and they have some things that they can loan you. Uh, maybe a, a cook stove, a camping cook stove, whatever it might be. See if you can borrow mm -hmm. it. You can also rent some of these things too and save the money in terms of making a full price purchase. Of course, you can always buy used. That's another way yeah. to get a good deal on items that you're going to need for your outdoor adventures. When it comes to the expense of travel, you want to take into consideration vehicle maintenance. Make sure that you have your transportation up to speed before you take it out of town. And if you're going like for bike rides a lot during the summertime, you want to make sure your bike is also tuned up and ready to go. Check the tires, make sure that they're going to last through the summer. You may have to budget some money to buy some parts for it or to take it to a bike shop and have it worked on. Or if you're handy, do your own work on your bike. But it's very important to keep any of your transportation up to good working order. Here's something else we do. We map out our trip before we go. Yeah. Now we try to yeah. avoid toll roads. I don't know about oh, yeah. you guys. Tell me in the comment section, do you avoid toll roads? Because we, we do. But if there's no way we can avoid a toll road, we figure out about how much it's gonna cost us in mm -hmm. tolls. And we have this little like basket we set between <laughs> us on the console yeah. that is toll road money. We make sure that we have a lot of change that we can use because otherwise you have to get like in the slow lane mm -hmm. and you have to pay them and you have to get change. But if you have change available and ready, then, and it'll tell you ahead of time, it'll say, you know, $2.50 toll coming your way in two minutes. So like Larry's driving and I'm going through all the change <laughs> trying to add it up to $2.50 because if I can do that before we get to the toll road, then that means that we can pay and go through the short line. Just another tip for you. If you have pets, that can also yeah. bring some extra costs. Let's say you have to board your pet because you can't take it along on your vacation, then that's gonna cost more. Uh, you also wanna make sure that they have flea and tick yeah. medicine on them so they don't get something from being outside. Now, we alluded a little bit earlier to like one of the ways that we have found free and frugal things in our area, and that is just simply Google it. Fun, free yeah. things to do in my area this weekend. But that just is sort of the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> there are nine other ways, tried and true methods, guys, yeah. that we have used in order to find summer fun on a budget. We did a whole video on it. The video is right over there for you. Go take a look.